Uh, good evening and thank you for joining us. My name is Luigi Del Parto. I'm the uh, editor of the Denver Gazette and Colorado Politics. Joining us tonight is Jim Carpenter, who served as chief of staff to Governor Bill Ritter and state director for U.S. Senator Ken Salazar. Jim, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. And also joining us is Kel Kelly Maher. Did I pronounce that correctly? Maher, but I'll take it anyway. Maher, Kelly Maher. Yeah of On Point Strategies, and uh, Kelly uh, also served as constituent liaison for uh, Congressman Bob Beaupre uh, a couple years ago. Uh, Kelly, thank you. Thank you for uh, thank you for being here. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Really uh, uh, pulled, some, pulled some resume lines way out of uh, way out of the back of that one. That was great. <laughs> so um, let's start with the mayor's race. Uh, you know, everything that we're hearing uh, right before the election seems to be confirmed by what we're seeing right now. The, Mike, Mike Johnson is ahead by about 10,000 votes. He was ahead in the first uh, initial tally. And, uh, you know, it, in theory, and, and Jim and Kelly, correct me if I'm wrong, in theory, his, his advantage is just going to grow in the next round of an, uh, uh, county. Uh, Jim, I'll start with you. Yeah, I, I think that's the, the the general pattern of these things that uh, uh, that some of the more um, you know moderate or conservative or older voters come in earlier, and uh, uh, younger, uh, more progressive, uh, uh, you know, wait till the last minute, drop the ballot off. Uh, so it, you know, if that pattern holds, then it you know it's, it certainly suggests a good night for you know for Johnston and and a disappointing night for uh, for the Kelly Bruff uh, camp. Um, you know, 10,000 votes is a lot to overcome. I think if, if, uh, at the moment, if you think that maybe there's going to be 175,000 or so, there's 50,000 votes. I mean, that's an awful lot for her to, uh, uh, to, to make up here in this time. And, uh, uh Steve, Hey, thank you. Uh, thank you for being able to make it, sir. Absolutely. Sorry to the delay there. Uh, no worries. And, and Steve, uh, of course is, uh, 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 another uh, very prominent, uh, very well-known um, strategist consultant in the state who had served as legislative, uh, legislative liaison for uh, Colorado Governor Richard uh, Lamb and served as uh, Denver Mayor Federico Pena's uh, issues director and also uh, debate coach at one point. Um, uh, Kelly, um, any surprises in the results so far? Uh I think for me, the real surprise is this the Cedabaca spread right now. I I was I was hoping that she was going to uh move on to her next employment. And I was I was really shocked when I saw that first number because I was hitting the refresh button at like 702. And I, you know, I saw the top line, saw Bruff and Johnson. That was about what I expected that was going to look like. And then I scrolled down and it was like, woof. It was a, thus far it is looking like a, a real uh, indictment on that style of politics in Denver. It's a, it's a 28 point spread. And if my calculations are correct, um, she's going to have to win 90% of the next round of of counting which i i don't see that happening um but you did say indictment what do you mean by that kelly i think my read and you know both jim and steve are uh I'm, i don't know if they're gonna have the same analysis that i will on this but my read is that people are just really kind of sick of all of the superfluous stuff like all of the stuff floating around and they want to focus on what matters to them. And uh, Candy C. DeBaca ran largely on, you know, not necessarily people's everyday, right? Not, not what their commute to work looks like, not what their taxes look like, not what public safety looks like. She was running on, on a lot of this like larger political theory that I think people are just frustrated and sick of that and that I personally super disagree with but but that aside 
I think that that's happening on both sides is this just really overheated rhetoric that is hyper partisan is really frustrating to people. And I think they are tired of it. And um, I hope that that style of indictment bears out on all elections across Colorado and nationally. Because I think yep. that we will all be better off for it. Yeah, I, Go ahead, sir. I agree. I agree with Kelly. I, I would just and Kelly may not may not like my my description, but Cedabaca is the is the Lauren Bobert for Democrats, right? I mean, she just they're just it's about political theater. That's what that's what really was Kelly was described as political theater. I mean, I mean, Bobert you're not Bobert. you're not wrong, right? Like it's yeah, just right. <laughs> Yeah, so I, and look, you do Lauren, like that description, huh? You do. We, we, Lauren, we purged, Lauren, we, we purged our bow, but we hope you, you purge yours next year. So, well, I mean, look, Lauren won her what nine R plus nine district by like a squeaker. And so, so this is this is what we're seeing, right? Is like people are sick of this garbage, and uh, they just want to know what's going to affect their daily lives. So, um, you're. You're right, Steve. I hate saying it, but I said it. <laughs> um, yeah, I think that's right, and I ho- and I hope that's right. I mean, people people just you, you know they're tired of the games. I mean, you know they, they've always been skeptical of politics and politicians, and uh, but when when it just becomes a you, you know a constant sort of you, you know fighting and bickering and you know theater and nonsense and silliness and conspiracies and all that kind of stuff you know people tune it out and I, and you know we saw that in the first round i think of the you know mayor's election and we're seeing it you know tonight in this uh, Cedar Baca race and you know that both Johnston and Bruff were you, you know thoughtful accomplished you know moderate people right and uh, uh, you know i think mike litwin was talking about it today uh, in his column you know nobody's going to be too excited nobody's going to be too unhappy you know, with whoever, uh, you know, whoever wins here, but, you know, they're going to get a level of, you know, competence and, and uh, you know, in, in service and attention to issues and not a bunch of nonsense. So I, I think that's all to the good. And Steve, correct me if I'm wrong. Again, I, I'm new here in Colorado, so I may not know what I'm talking about. So uh, cor- correct me if I'm wrong, but I have the sense just from hearing from you and from others that um, there seems to be a pivot toward uh, pragmatism, if you want to call it that, a, a bit of a movement toward the center. And maybe that's always been the case, but we saw that, or at least we heard that from people during the mayor's race. You know, we, we do have two candidates in that for, for mayor that are considered to be more centrist, at least more centrist than the field of 17 candidates. And yeah. and now and and I I wonder if that's that's true. And and second, what does that bode for the new relationship of mm-hmm. The new mayor. Let's just assume it's Mike Johnson. It's looking that way with the council. So I'm going to go way out and live here and say it's not just looking that way. This race is over. Um, the only thing up to debate now is the spread, and um, I think double digits is likely to be where this race ends up in the mayor's race. Fifty-five, forty-five. It seems to me to be pretty easy. It might be a little more than that. But um, what's most important, if you're in the Johnson camp in particular. And, and, and probably Kelly, too, for that matter, is that um, you're going to have a city council mate that you might be going to work with, right? This council uh, might not be as crazed as, as it has been in the past, at least with some members. And so, yes, pragmatism wins the day in Denver. And well, issues like, you know, opioid addiction and homelessness and crime, that requires real life work and roll your sleeves up. I mean, these, these are not kind of, you know, bumper sticker kinds of issues. And um People in Denver are, know this, they're serious about this. You know, people in Denver travel to Seattle, San Francisco, and LA, and, you know, they, they, we don't want that here. And so we're going to have to work really hard to keep that from happening. And I think that's that's why the vote was what it was, both in April and again today. Uh, uh, Kelly, the the new mayor, the next mayor, is going to have some tremendous challenges here. Can we mo- mention the, uh, you know, opo- opioid problem, fentanyl uh, deaths, We've been hammered by it the last several years. We have a homelessness crisis. You know, we have an acute housing problem. You know, all of these things. How much, how much honeymoon period do you think Mike Johnson is going to have with the voters? That's a really good question. It, these are all very complicated, multifaceted issues, and I think the thing about the mayor's race, at least to me, was that. 
a really bad mayor could have done a lot of damage, many of whom are almost are all of whom I think were taken out, out in the first round. Um, with Kelly and Mike, I would have been happy with either. I supported Mike, but but ultimately the pragmatists kind of won the day. And I think that that these issues are ones that we're going to have to continue to fight and we're going to have to continue to unwind for years to come. And my hope is that Denverites understand that. You know, I'm I'm old enough now to remember when John Hickenlooper ran for mayor, promising to end homelessness in 10 years. And it's, uh, you know, it's really a thing that we constantly have to be on top of. Both Kelly and Mike would have done a good job. I think Mike will do a very good job. But he can't just wave a magic wand and fix it tomorrow um, but the thing you, that I, sorry what i so said you didn't like the parking meters that john had for yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> you know all you need to do is is run a campaign with the change belts and you'll be fine yeah. um old old school joke there sorry luigi anyway but but ultimately the one thing that that i think mike really brings to the table is that he is a superior communicator and he really connects with people to know Mike Johnston one-on-one -on -one is to like Mike Johnston a lot. One of the reasons I supported him is because he and I opposed each other on Amendment 66. And he's the only guy I've ever debated on a debate stage that I finished liking him more than when I started, even though we were on the opposite side from one another. And so I think that the, the thing he will do really well in this uh, role is he will be a, a really good communicator to the people of Denver about what the plan is and pull people together to move forward. But but none of these issues are simple. And, and I, I will say, Luigi, before you jump to your next question, that with our change of election uh, calendar, um, he has much less time to put together a team yeah. than past mayors, right? I mean, he, he's taking office in July. Uh, that's right around the corner. In past races, it was over in May. So you had like, you know, a month and a half, two months to put your team together, he's going to have to really scramble. And I, I'm sure he's already been thinking about it a lot, but you can't spend too much time thinking about it. you got to win the race. So um, Good he's point. Really get going. And, and I think it'll take him a little while to get underway. But I, your honeymoon question is um, shorter than for most mayors. But, boy, in a year, people, wanna, people, need, people want to see real difference on the streets in downtown Denver. And if that doesn't happen in a year, pitchforks are coming out. For sure. Pitchforks are coming out in a year, Jim, but also talk about big promises and, and you know, John Hickenlooper's promise to end homelessness. And, you know, Mike Johnson promised that that if all the stars align the way he wants them to align, he's going to end homelessness in a year. Your thoughts, sir? Well, uh, uh, you know, campaigns are different than governing. There's no question about that. And the three of us have been have been through that uh, transition from uh you know, from politics to actually, you know, sitting in that office and making decisions and, you know, making the levers of government move and, you know, and all of that. And um, uh, a, a year is, uh, you know, I, I think is very unrealistic. And there's a, certainly a danger in that in over promising and, you know, under delivering. That's a that's a that's a huge challenge for, you know, anybody who uh, you know, goes through a campaign and has has big ambitions. You know, I think um, a Mayor Johnston, it, it, you know, I think people will be patient with him for, you know, a period of time. And uh, a big test is, uh, you know, him transitioning now uh, from candidate to decision maker. He was in the state legislature, but that's a very different thing than, uh, you know, being the executive and, you know, making decisions and putting together a team and managing a team and, you, you know, the entrenched bureaucracy of uh, Denver government and, uh, you know, all the neighborhood challenges and, and uh, you know, bringing along uh, the, you know, uh, the rough supporters and bringing along people who didn't vote for him. And, you know, I mean, there's just a, a, a whole lot of big things in, in front of him. And, you know, he's uh, he's smart and capable and, uh, you know, can do all of that. But it, it's it's a it's a heavy, heavy lift and, and uh, an expectation that you're going to uh, move all of this and and solve a homeless problem in a year is you know you know is is pretty is pretty unrealistic. If you can get a good start and you can show that you're moving, 
uh, people give you more time. Uh, and, uh, you know, and that's, that's a lot of what he's got to do. Before I let you go, I want to ask Kelly, you know, any advice to the next mayor? I would say my advice to him would be to listen and talk to people from all corners of Denver, because one of the the things that's beautiful about Denver is that it is such a melting pot community. And one of the things that is so hard about Denver is that it's really easy for people of all kinds of different stripes to feel left out and disenchanted very quickly. And the key to that is getting a constant communication because it's it, it is gonna be it's gonna be a tough coalition to pull together of people in order to make the changes needed that he has promised it's gonna be it's gonna be a heavy lift i think he can do it but it's gonna be a really heavy lift do you have the same question to you sir uh well i i agree with kelly i i think you um i think you have to be a master communicator in this job i think you have to stay confident but stay humble I uh, understand that uh, uh, you, you know there's a lot of demands out there and a lot of interests that um, you know come together in a different way again when you're governing than uh, you know than when you're campaigning. So um, I, I just uh, you know, but he again he's capable. He's very smart, very articulate. You know, I think if he gets up every day and and uh, you know what am I going to do today to you know serve Denver and and carries it out in that way that people will give him a you know a, a, a really good chance and uh, give him a longer honeymoon. I I have a more tangible answer because those those are right those are the right answers. But you know we used to have symphonies in the park right at Wash Park Civic Center Sloan's Lake wherever um, music downtown. So let's spend some money all that COVID let's spend some COVID money. You know, hiring hiring musicians, you know, working with the SCFD, getting some stuff done, but putting a smile back on people's faces, making people feel good about living in the center city, make people feel good about being downtown or going back to their parks, um, doing those kinds of things with their families. People used to do that all the time uh, in Denver, and we've lost that. It's no one's fault. It's maybe COVID's fault, but I think we have to kind of get that back and have people feel good about going to opening day at a Rockies game and not tripping over, uh, you know, Drug needles, uh, that kind of thing's got that. That's real live, tangible stuff like that's got to happen. See, Steve, what you're saying is inject, you know, as much as you can, a sense of optimism, right? A sunshine in Denver, or something along those lines. Yes, but but actually, do some things. I mean, you can't just be optimistic. You have to actually, you know, do some things in practice that give people that optimism, right? Uh, saying it's not enough, you actually have to do some things. Uh, Jim, Steve, Kelly, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate this and. Uh, uh, enjoy the rest of your night, and uh, I'll talk to you at some point. All right. Thanks, Luigi. Thanks. Thank you, guys. Take care. Bye for now.